What's up guys, this is Kuruto here. Um, I did say I was gonna make a VOD highlight for the box opening stream I did on Saturday, but might as well increase the scuff by just providing live commentary over the live stream, which is sped up by like five times. It's definitely gonna be a mistake because I'm not gonna have enough time talking about each uh, card as it pops up, but uh, yeah. Art is going to pop up, at least in post, on the left side, so it, uh, it's going to make up for the mistake of my camera not being able to focus during the stream. Uh, so yeah, um, instead of talking about the card in depth, or quote unquote in depth, um, you can always refer to the live stream itself, but I'm just going to do some comments here and there as I just basically look at the video on the playback. So. Yeah, uh, before we get into it, thanks to big thanks to Kaim for the background music. Always nice to have. Um, if you don't know, Kaim did the background music for Cronies, uh, like walking room uh, or waiting room uh, BGM. So yeah, expect those kind of BGMs from Kaim. Always check him out. Always lovely to uh, be providing free background music for anyone to use as we start off with a curse rather than a material deck card. Although this card could technically be a material, uh, it's not really a material deck, but um, can be a quote unquote token. So um, yeah, I'm very excited to play Ranger. I'm hoping to main it um, this set because uh, I was an assassin main last set and that did not work out so well. <laughs> um, I did, yeah, I did try for tournaments, but yeah, it didn't work out so well. Maybe on screen I'll show uh, <laughs> my results, but yeah. Um, just going straight into the next cards. Um, on stream, I do go over each card that I see for the first time. So um, yeah, if you are interested in what I think, um, it's always on this on the live stream VOD. But yeah, the ice, the, the art is very nice in Grand Archive. It's probably its main selling point. Uh, and then the next selling point is probably its pretty robust rule set. Um, like I said on the stream, it does borrow a lot from magic, but I think that's always a good thing. Games should, you know, take the best parts of each other and just improve on it. Uh, in your own like product so uh, yeah I mean what is it it's, it's like 40 minutes it was 40 minutes on the live stream and this is only my third card yikes um, it does get very slow in the beginning but uh, as you know we see cards again and again duplicates really um, it will be a lot faster. And this card particularly reminds me of the Crystal Empowerment. I'll show it on the screen as well, but uh, yeah, hopefully it doesn't uh, have problems like the Crystal. Speaking of problems, yeah, because Manic Zealot is going to be a pain to deal with in Fire Aggro. Uh, yeah, nice cute art. Uh, Awakened Deacon. Not sure how useful she's going to be. We stay on her for quite a bit actually now that I see the VOD. <laughs> uh side step with our crimson tier artwork. Um I wanted to open more crimson tiers that I did in the live stream, but sadly we can't really control that, can we? And the first of many guardian attack cards uh, from the set, you can see so expensive, but it hurts so much. Uh, am I looking forward to playing Guardian? Maybe not. Maybe I am, but I'm definitely not looking forward to facing them. They're gonna hurt. <laughs> nice artwork here from Rain Soul Bishop. Uh, I noticed a lot of the artwork this set is from the, uh, the artist from Dragon Dragon Art. Yeah, so didn't notice it during the stream, but. I definitely did notice it when I was sorting the cards. And we have our first alternative champion, Polkork. Um, it does kind of look comical, but I think he's going to be pretty strong in the competitive uh, scene. 
but that might also just be due to Crimson Tear. <laughs> if you get that engine going, Polkor Crimson Tear engine might be... Uh, might be very strong. And yes, I did open an SR on my first pack. Uh, I guess that's what happens when you spend like, almost an hour on it. <laughs> but Freitas, uh, I did pull a lot of her uh, during the opening. I don't know how many is a good number to have in the main deck, especially for like a distant focus deck, which Freitas is probably all about. Um, yeah, being unique, probably maybe three, two or three might be a good number. Definitely not a four of, I don't think. And I think I'm just going over the champions here on stream. Don't know why. <laughs> I barely have any viewers anyway, but uh, yeah, just in case, just explaining um, what champions are really. And here we go with first of many excoriates, just there to taunt me that it could have been a Crimson Tear with the artwork, but nope, no Crimson Tear this time around. But yeah, jokes aside, Excoriate is going to be a pretty useful spell. Too bad it's not fast, but uh, you can't, <laughs> not every card can be broken, can it? And one of many different potions that clerics can own. Um, obviously, it, it's not just a cleric only thing, but clerics probably the main focus for potion play. Um, and here I'm just talking about how good this particular 1-1 one -one is going to be. I think Lone Gunslinger is going to be in very many <laughs> ranger decks, I think. And speaking of a staple, Armor Valkyrie is probably a staple for Wind Guardian, right? Sitfast, I think, is a pretty broken mechanic, and especially on top of uh, like the in Intrepid Highwayman effect. Uh, yeah, definitely do think she's going to be very scary to deal with. Uh, study the Fable. I don't remember what I said about this card, but two mana draw card into memory might be nice. It's kind of unfortunate. It's slow, but um, that would probably make it too broken, I think. Um, Airship Cruiser. Yeah, that's a decent card, I think. I don't know if I'm going to be playing Water Ranger, but uh, at least they have that option. And Organize the Alliance, uh, this is probably going to be played by every Guardian class, uh, every Guardian deck that wants Fostered. Although I'm pretty sure other classes could use Fostered as well. Um, it just depends on if the Fostered ability has class bonus or not. Oh, so, yeah. Altered Forge Light, it's basically just a fire potion, right? <laughs> Can potentially deal 4 damage to one thing, or 2 damage to 2 different things, so... Yeah. And here we go, more board wipes. I definitely want more board wipes in this game. Aggro, I think, is a bit too strong right now, but I don't know if this particular board wipe is going to be good enough. 5 mana and it only goes for 2 attackers? Yeah, maybe not, maybe not. It does have floating memory at least. And uh, we have our first site of the set, Neos site for the Neos class, uh, as we go straight into Tether the Flames. Um, I did compare it on stream to Risk Factor, and I'll have Risk Factor on the screen too. Now, this was the card I was talking about on stream, and I do like these kind of design cards where um, it's like a Catch-22 kind of thing. So, very nice, very nice. <laughs> Yikes. I think this is like my fifth pack and I'm already taking so long. Um, but yeah, first slot, it's either a champion or a token, and this time it's going to be a token that uh, one of the Tenoris level 3s uh, spawn. So there's that. At least everyone's going to have a token. Um, some games don't give you enough tokens, honestly. And uh, yeah, just mortal water ranger stuff. I'm kind of tuning out on Water Ranger right now, but uh, it's probably not that bad. I'm just... I've struggled so much with water that um, I probably just have a bias. But here we go with Escape the Wreckage. It's kind of the second part to the art of Organize the Alliance, so... Yeah, even though they have nothing to do with each other in terms of effects, um, that's always interesting to point out at least. And we have uh, just a nice rainy. Um, I'm not sure if it fits the Eric class, but it is fire, so I 
guess if clerics want to go that route, they can. And here we go. Can't take a drone. I did kind of compare it to the Honkai Star Rail drone. Um, obviously, it's not like derivative, or I'm not pointing any fingers, but it just looks so similar to it. Fiery Duelist. Pretty bad stat line, but I think she could still work with her effects. Um, especially her on enter effect. We just have a guy. I, I'm, I'm being very slow with these water cards. <laughs> just a guy that uh, clerics might play. Um, not sure, actually. It's very hard to evaluate these cards <laughs> without playing the game. As a uh, freezing round is on the screen here. Um, it does remind me, it basically is Chilling Touch from the previous set, uh, just without a natural floating memory, but um, yeah be used a lot by Water Ranger at least. Now we have Wild Growth Elixir, the fine wine elixir here. Um, could be a hit or miss card, um, depends on how early you get it honestly, that's probably why it's a hit or miss, but yeah. An Umbral Tide over here, um, I think it's gonna be a very strong card. Any card that says draw multiple cards is strong. It is draw for both players, but I think combo with Creeping Torment, it's going to be a killer card. <laughs> and we have one of the herbs here. Um, yeah, not much else to say really. Um, I don't think a lot of players will actually use the pay effect. Uh, speaking of not... Actually, let's just skip that card. <laughs> I don't think highly of Surgery anyway. Reposition on the other hand, one mana distant with Floating Memory pretty strong I think as well as pretty much any card that can mitigate damage as diffusive block um, and we have our first reprint here hopefully we'll see more reprints in future sets um, I think we've only had like one or two reprints I think so or shieldmate is also a reprint from the set but I haven't seen her in the box opening all right and this is kind of a way to fix herbs uh, with Floating Memory, I think this with the other Harvest card, a Cleric's gonna be so scary to deal with. And uh, another Reload card here from Ranger. Um, I'm not sure if you want to play the Floating Memory, but I guess it's good late game. And here we go with some Curse Interaction here. Uh, learning from the mistake of Magic by not introducing Planeswalk Interaction. Uh, since they introduced curses in Grand Archive, it's always smart to introduce some curse interaction for uh, other players. And it's floating memory, so it's always a plus. Uh, another modal card, uh, kind of like Surgery. I think it might be a bit better than Surgery, but it might just be my Ranger bias. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I am sure talking about it a lot. There we go, nice art here from... Uh, the Fanatical Devotee. Um, Cleric Thamer card. So it's a bit interesting. Um, not. Oh, there's a follow. <laughs> follow alert. Uh, I don't know if there's that many Thamer support from this set. I think that was the only Thamer card. So, yeah, Thamer's probably still not going to go anywhere. <laughs> and here we go with. Uh, the alternative Diana, level 3. This is the one that doesn't come with a starter deck, I'm pretty sure. And uh, pretty powerful effect, but I don't know if it beats out on the other one. Yeah, um, I was going to make a comment on Blazing Charge, but uh, maybe just refer to the stream. Oh, I talked a lot about this card. I think this is my hottest take. I don't think Academy Attendant is that great. <laughs> I think its stat line is so bad in, in terms of what you can get for it. Uh, Hyperthermia, I think this is the... Uh, oh, I can't remember now. It's the... It's the... The Apostles effect? Yeah. From the last set. And here we go with some nice Anthem effects. There's a lot of Anthem effects in this set, which is nice. Although, maybe not so nice if it remains to be an aggro-centered meta. 
it is one of many domains that you can play from Alchemical Revolution. Uh, either domains or automatons is the the theme, I think, for this particular set. And it's always nice to see them experiment. As I am showing off the alternative guardian for the game, uh, Nico. I mean, when she got revealed, she definitely did make a lot of waves. <laughs> As I pull the, I think first you are off the bot uh, of the of the opening. So uh, Elysian Astrolabe is. I don't know if it's a finisher, but it is a very nice, uh, nice way to, to progress as the uh, Astro Cleric at least. So this is where I get surprised that I see the starter deck Diana in the box opening because I believe that was a change from the last. Uh, last set because I think uh, you could only open the alternative level threes for each champion so I think they were thinking of draft in mind uh, for this set around at least there are some draft chaff here and there but not many most of the cards are usable and we are starting to see some duplicates and here we go with the classic red health potion um, that is going to be very useful in this aggro meta, I think. <laughs> Alright. Ah, here we go. Trading post. <laughs> so, a lot of people are saying, whoa, this is Magic's trading post equivalent. And uh, it kind of is. The, the pricing, or the cost is kind of a lot, but uh, modal is always nice to have. And here we go. Oh, uh... Yeah, I, I had a brain fart there. Yeah. Um, just the payoff for counter spells, which Cleric seemed to be its playstyle for. Ah, here we go. First of many subjugating lashes. Uh, I need to keep track of them, and I will, because I, I did say on stream I'm going to count how many go up in the stream. Hopefully I don't miss any. Um, but yeah, from now on I'll do a little like whip sound effect. For each one that appears so hopefully you guys don't get jump scared hopefully i do the audio levels correctly this time but uh yeah there's just so many new cards i did say there was like 170 cards but um after looking at it it's, it's closer to about like 220 ish <laughs> i was so off Uh, yeah, so that's the first row done for the first box. Holy crap, I am so slow with this. Um, as we get another obelisk here in the front. Um, yeah, we got another lone gunslinger here. As we go for sort of a Ultron-y, like, Buffy spell. <laughs> I don't know how useful it's going to be because it seems like a win more, but uh, it does have floating memory. Oh, and here we go with a, I think, a powerhouse card. Um, I think Alchemist is going to be super good. Uh, oh, as we have Raft Reload. Now tell me, I'd say on stream, but tell me this isn't Rudeus. <laughs> uh, I might be just tripping. The hair color is nowhere near, but the hairstyle at least. <laughs> uh. Alright, I'm talking a lot about that War Priestess. <laughs> And just another domain. Uh, this is an anthem effect, so um, it's pretty strong, but it is its upkeep cost is going to be a bit hard to meet um, if you're not guardian, at least. Here we go, Dino level one. Oh, the controversial um, to say on stream, but she was supposed to be the box art for this set, but yeah, not anymore. It's Arasana time. <laughs> As uh, we're starting to get some duplicates here, and there is my first foiling card. Um, I'm not sure how good it is, honestly, if you read it. Oh, nice, draw a card. But the the other effect, I don't know if it's useful or not. At least it's probably be played for the draw. And here's another way to buff up your potions. Um, I'm pretty sure it's additive rather than replacement, so... Um, who knows? <laughs> Definitely not me. 
And another preventative or damage preventative spell. Um, it's always nice to see because I think last set it was just warriors that had it. No, actually I'm I'm tripping. There's like water barrier and resolute stand and all that. Um, but uh, yeah, cheap alternatives. I should uh, rephrase. And here we go. Just another great art. Another great art in the set. I mean, Grand Archive. If, if you're not if you don't mind the anime style, then the art is just a, a treat to your eyes, really. Okay, I'm really talking a lot about it. Actually, it was a pretty strong effect, too, now that I uh, remember. And here we go. Um, something that I didn't link in the stream, but it's very similar to Resolute Stand. And talking about another card, Meltdown is similar to Excalibur. <laughs> uh, here we go. Astro Board Wipe. Uh, it's sad to see it locked to advanced elements, but eh, what can you do really? All right, and I am talking very, very slow in terms of not matching with the video. I do apologize about that. I did say I was going to be a bit scuffed as uh, we have a sort of anthem effect, but it is very expensive. Um, even with the discount at four, uh, <laughs> it's quite a lot. <laughs> And here we go with a big voice spell from the Guardians. Plus five attack to a weapon is crazy. <laughs> okay, well, we do have a card that I did kind of compare, I don't think on stream to Weaponsmith, but um, I will make that comparison now at least. Uh, Battlefield Spotter I think is very strong for Wind Ranger. And I did get like four of her on the uh, box opening, so I'm pretty happy about that. And here is me talking about a card I've already talked about, just forgotten. Uh, Dumbo Kuruto here. Uh, another domain. Um, could be nice, especially with the uh, and or memory uh, the key uh, line. As, uh, yeah, we're getting so many new cards here, <laughs> and I'm running out of time to even talk about them, but uh, I don't want to slow down the footage too much because I don't want to make the video that much more lo like long, but that does not make sense, <laughs> sentence-wise. As we have Arte, our Astra unique ally, and she's mainly here to snipe the horse, <laughs> or the deer, um, whatever people call it. Uh, and yeah, that was a pretty good pull. Um, do need more of her. Uh, I can't remember what I'm talking about right now. Get to the pack opening, Kuruto. Alright, I do get the starter deck to Norris. Um, oh, is it here I make the comparison? Or oh, maybe not, I might make the comparison later. Um, but uh, yeah, just pointing out the tokens that are related to the specific Tenoris. And I think I was talking about the level and D-level interaction. So yeah, there's that. Oh, there's another whip. Um, oh, I already made a marker though, so... <laughs> I gotta keep my keep myself on my toes here, because I don't want to miss out on the, on the lashes. <laughs> and here we go, navigate the streets. Um, I did compare it to Scry the Skies, because it's basically Scry the Skies, but for domains. And we have another Nico themed spell. Um, I'm not gonna whip this time because I specifically said subjugating lash. So, uh, unfought for you guys. Alright, level 2 Diana. Um, yeah, I think it's an alright level 2. Um, maybe. <laughs> There we go, pleep a piece. So this is sort of the propaganda slash ghostly prison and the card. And I think it's gonna be very important for control decks. <laughs> oh, here we go with another alternative champion. Uh it's like the first like lineage break champion that has a level one. And uh Yeah, it's an interesting take. Actually the obelisk. Oh. Six attack spell, yikers. 
I wonder what the max damage guardians could actually whip out, honestly. Um, uh, I don't think they have double damage damagers, but uh, they definitely do have unpreventable damage uh, attacks. <laughs> and here is just the spirit a reprint for this set, just nicely appropriately themed in terms of art. Speaking of art, this one I think it's a pretty good art. It's kind of kind of smart. <laughs> Oh, I'm so bad at commentary. Um, Demon's Aim. Uh, I do like. Uh, it's kind of what you would expect from curses, like upsides and downsides. Um, sadly, I only opened one, so I'm hoping the starter decks have them. Otherwise, ugh, do I have to buy another box? <laughs> As a... Yeah, we get our first foil SR purse, or per se, I don't know. Um, but he's an alright card. She kind of reminds me of Parsonet in terms of utility. Um, but yeah, that's fine. Duskbite Communion is a kind of interesting spell. It kind of says Screw Tamer. And I don't know what else it says really aside from Screw Tamer. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, more herbs. Uh, oh, that was a whip, wasn't it? That was a whip. <laughs> Alright, I just have to put my hand on this keyboard because I am missing all the all the whips really. Oh, this is where I struggle to try and get the camera to show the art because and I am not I did not do the art justice when I was streaming. Um apologies for that though. The Elgato face cam apparently doesn't focus and that's that's a big no-no. <laughs> uh yeah, I probably should get a different camera and just use the face cam for like my VTuber tracking because my god <laughs> I'm using such old webcams. <laughs> um yeah surely I should have run into enough duplicates as I just point out two new cards back to back. <laughs> uh but yeah that's like our one or two uh, assassin card there. And fractals are back baby. It's just for the Neos but uh, fractals are still still a thing. There we go, Tenoris. I did make the comparison with Epic Seven's character, which I'll also put on screen. But yeah, tell me they don't look the same. <laughs> and here we go, an artwork that I did not expect from the set, which has Tristan. If you didn't know, Tristan's the one on my playmat too. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> as we have. Uh, sort of a mirrored fractal. Uh, we saw its like counterpart in the last set, which I'll show on the screen. But uh, yeah, nice to have options at least. As I'm just blazing through, not giving uh, future Kuroto time to talk about it in the post-production. Uh, but uh, that is the first box done at least, and I think it took like two hours. Jesus, I am so bad at these sort of things. <laughs> Oh, this is the last pack. Um, the, oh, not last pack. Wow, I still have two or more packs in the background there. Um, nice spoiling. Uh, probably not a big hitter um, in terms of value, but spoiling is very nice in this game, at least. There we go. Sight for the Umbra element. Um, thank God the second effect is a May because I can see myself doing so much damage to <laughs> to myself with it. And an interesting card here, Fireblood Oath. Um, this got me thinking with a lot of like brew ideas, but um, it is a bit costly. Five mana if you're not a guardian, and it costs three fire in your graveyard, so it's a bit of an iffy card, but I think it can enable some pretty nice combos at least. As uh, we're still getting some new cards here. Um, I'm pretty sure we've seen like all the commons right now, so we're just going after the uncommons and rares and above. And this is like the reverse uh, fine wine elixir. <laughs> I don't think I made that joke on stream, but yeah. Uh, it's uh, what I thought of afterwards. <laughs> um, 
What am I pointing out about that tonic? I'm pretty sure I already talked about it before. Uh, a Shadowfall Keep. Uh, yeah, a lot of cards with the uh, sort of like the mill focus, but um, the problem is most of it seems to be self mill. I don't know how valuable that is going to be. Um, but I did notice a lot of cards also caring about like X amount of water cards in the graveyard, in your graveyard, so. Maybe self mill is a thing. I think I'm just too fixated on the enemy mill side of things. So I might have looked at it at a different angle. As though we get the uh, other Arasana level 3. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be so toxic to run into them in control. Uh, but I don't know how consistent they'll be. Um, as we get a nice. Uh, Ranger finisher card here, Anathema's Bullet. Uh, I only pulled two, I think, in the stream, but I'm hoping there's more in the starter deck. <laughs> there we go, Tenoris level two. Um, I was excited because I thought the shirtless version, as a little sheet, as I shown on the screen, um, there was a shirtless version that wasn't from the CSR, but it seems like shirtless version is only CSR. So I was a bit sad after I found that out. Um, so you get out first automaton drone token um yeah i think i did mention that it kind of looked like ai art but like no slight to the artist i know the artist did a lot of grand archive art in the past as well so but the forearms really does get me a bit <laughs> and another tethered in flame i think i have four of those uh counter spells so you know, always keep my op options open for <laughs> playing control as we get another foil. I believe this is our last foil of the box. Um, and it is very pretty, at least. <laughs> we pull a uh, level 2 Vanitas. Um, but yeah, Vanitas, I think the only alternative uh, champion that requires a lineage. Aside from Merlin, Merlin of course, because Merlin did get her level 3. Um, but it is interesting to say the least. Oh, and then we do pull the non-foil version of uh, the repulsion card there. Alright, speed through these things. Oh, here comes another big, big attack from the Guardian class. Um, yeah. Not much else to say there. I'm not... Honestly, I haven't played Grand Archive in a good minute ever since the uh, the last ascent, so um, I don't know what a game looks like right now, honestly. Especially not uh, now with um, ALC being released. Uh, yeah. Always nice art. Oh, another Guardian attack. Um, it only says 4 attack, but trust me, this is going to hit for as much as like 10 on average, I think. Oh, my model is weirded, getting weirded out there as it loses my tracking. Uh, one of the few archers <laughs> in the set. Uh, Ranger class is a thing, but most of them did apparently have firearms, so it's always nice to see some... Uh, bow and arrow usage even though we're in like a mage punky uh setting all right are we having a slowdown here are we getting more new cards oh looks like we're getting new cards and it's a vanitas specific card too <laughs> i think the problem was that they didn't have enough class slots for monk so they just slapped them in the cleric class <laughs> so we get a rare material deck card um, honestly, when opening packs, you kind of want to pray you don't get so many duplicate material cards, because you can only run, like, one of them in a deck, so multiples just seem kind of wasteful on the slot. <laughs> Alright, what's next? Um, ooh, get Lena. So I didn't actually see her in the previews, so I was kind of excited to see her when I opened her. But uh, I don't know if the effect is strong enough to warrant a card slot. Maybe a one-of, just for like, tick, but 
Yeah, maybe that's all she is. Alright, I'm about to go on crazing left again. But we get another damage pre prevention spell, and this one I think is pretty good. Especially since it's a distance enabler. Um, Alright, what else is there? Um, did I not really talk about Vanishing Shot already? Oh, here we go. You are of the second box. Uh, it is the Divine Relic of the set. Um, comparable with the PCR and Grail. Um, although I think it's not as strong as the Ring. It might be the same power level as the Grail. Who knows? <laughs> as I get a, uh, another... Uh, foil herb, I think. I think this is my first or my second herb. Uh, either way, I did pull like three foil herbs, and thankfully they, none of them were duplicates. So big plus, a uh, big thumbs up from me at least. And here we go with the second, second, third, counter spell of the set. And of course, it is in the water uh, element too. So Ugh, water arasana is going to be probably the most popular. Uh, configuration for a lot of decks as we pull another foil and we also pull a pretty strong domain I think um, this one probably go in all kinds of decks like aggro mid-range and control so um, yeah, it's always it's always a good thing to pull something like that as you probably want four of, of, of them <laughs> A fractal of snow. Um, I think I compared it to uh, Winter Orb from Magic, but it's more like Dahlia than Winter Orb, so sorry about that comparison. It probably confused a lot of people. As uh, Enhanced Potency, I think it's going to be a pretty strong card. Shame it's on Windlock, but uh, yeah, always doubling triggers is just way too powerful of an effect, I think. As we pull a nice Umbra ally here, um, yeah, I'll probably talk about Umbra allies later on as we get the second Tenorus. Um, this one's more focused on uh, buffing up a single weapon with your with your objects tokens, and uh, yeah, that's why I say the average attack damage that Tenorus could do is probably higher than you think. Uh, pulling a Jenny here. Um, I can't really talk too much about Jenny in this, really. Um, I think he's fine. <laughs> okay, and we got another Valfield Spotter, which is nice. I did pull four of them, so um, I was happy about that. I think I already said that. Am I just going dumb right now? Oh no, Kurto being Bakato. <laughs> Uh, yep, so that is box two. We're just gonna be cleaning up things here, picking up all the cards up to rare uh, rarity, and going to box three as my model goes crazy once again. I really do need a fixable lighting issue in this room. But, uh, yep. Uh, just need some time. As uh, I get another Gloom Spire, which is. Nice, I think that is my second one of the box opening out of two, so yeah. Do need two more of them later, I guess, <laughs> as we get another foil, I think, from the first pack, second pack. Um, yep, Mind Break Bullet. Um, I don't know what I said on stream, but it's a decent card, but I think the bullet slots are going to be very heavily contested. I don't know if it is worthy of running or not. As we just speed through things, I think we're nearing a new card very soon. As, uh, here we go. Load, load soul. Um. Yeah. It's a, it's a weird card. I don't know how many guns people should run, but if you do run many, maybe load soul is worthy of a main deck slot. There we go. A card that will enable domain focus deck lists a lot. Um, yeah. Plus, it has an activated ability too, so 
Um, it's not necessarily a dead card. So we get a pretty broken weapon here. A bit unfortunate it's locked Polkork, but I mean, if it wasn't, probably every Fire Ranger would be running it. So it's understandable at least. It's just weird that like uh, Nico's signature weapon isn't Nico locked. <laughs> As uh, we pull a nice rose here. Um, I did compare it to Noble Sack from Hearthstone, and while Rose might not die like Noble Sack, <laughs> it's probably a funny comparison, right? Uh, oh, here we go with a gun weapon here. I think this is in the starter deck, so not much else to talk about really. It's just a good like, first or second gun you can materialize. Alrighty. All right, I've been missing so many lashes. I am so bad at this. <laughs> uh, oh, nice. Oh, that's a, that's a lash actually. <laughs> As a, I was too fixated on the spotter. As we pull another unique ally, Dahlia, idyllic dreamer. Um, oh yeah. After looking at Dahlia, this is probably it, it probably changed my I, my perspective on self mill. But oh, relying on just one card from your deck might be a bit risky of a playstyle. <laughs> All right, cleaning up the the piles here. Um, as we are reaching a, probably a new card soon. There we go. Uh, Clockwork amalgam. Eh. Like I said, not too much on Guardian, so I really can't give an accurate. Uh, evaluation about this as we pull our uh, UR of the box which is Carter um, and I was very happy about this because I wanted as many Carters as possible because I am going to be playing Umbra uh, Rangers so always nice to pull multiple copies of him which I think I pulled two and here we go a card that's very similar to a card in the past Frostroad Paladin uh, Awakened Frost Guard is probably not as consistent as Paladin is, but um, yeah, maybe with Organized Alliance, uh, she could be probably better. She does have a higher ceiling at least. <laughs> as we pull another foil, very, very nice. Um, sadly, I didn't pull like any foils of champions. Um, I did watch like Leora and Nova pull. On their streams and they got so many foil champions I was so jealous um, that might make me want to maybe buy more boxes I'll probably open it off stream since you know I don't want to flood the channel with just box openings but uh, yeah it was fun watching them uh, pull their cases at least um, sadly they didn't pull uh, any CSRs either so it's, that's like three different instances of missing for the 40% as we pull our first and only crimson tier I was happy when I pulled her but at the aftermath not being able to pull additional copies was very heartbreaking <laughs> oh god uh, synthetic core eh, it's an okay card I thought it was gonna be like bubble of mending where you draw a card but uh, saving an automaton might be not a bad deal either, especially with like Crimson Tear and all that. Anyway, just speeding through things here now. Um, as we get probably another bad card, I think, in my opinion, sacking three herbs just for the chance to find a potion. And even then you could whiff, so I don't know if it's an actual good card. I'm kind of sad it's taken the SR slot, so uh, who knows? Maybe I'm just wrong in evaluating cards. <laughs> All right, Spell Shield Astra. Um, that, I think that's like our third Spell Shield X card. Um, not every element has a Spell Shield card, but uh, at least Astra is one of them. <laughs> Uh, another foil here. I think that was another Spell Shield Astra foil too. So we pull a Violet Haze. Um, kind of an interesting curse. I do kind of wish I opened more, but I do know there is at least one in the starter deck. 
as we pull up a mirror, um, which will help with the water cleric uh, playstyle. I think water cleric, it's pushed a lot, I think. And I'm pretty sure water is the starter deck element, so yeah, pushed for a good reason. <laughs> Alrighty, just speeding through these duplicate cards here. Um, I think we're nearing the ending where um, I will have more chances to speak. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully it wasn't so bad of a watch this VOD. Um, maybe if I was a bit... Oh, as I pull pretty strong Lord effect. Um, I think I thought Lord and Anthem effects were different, but I think they're just interchangeable. But uh, yeah, it's... Very strong card. Um, even not playing like Guardian, I, I still view it as a very powerful effect. Um, as we are just speeding through things here, I think I do have some lull period. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys will let me know if this kind of format of a video is decent. Um, at least like watching two times speed might be tolerable. I know I keep saying that, that I'm a lot better at two times speed, but uh, who knows, maybe people don't think so. We have a nice cute card here, um, which in my opinion, I don't know how usable it is. Five mana slash four mana is kind of a lot for the effect. As we pull our fourth UR on the, in the fourth box, um, or the first UR in the fourth, uh, it's so hard to speak. Uh, basically just fourth you are overall the one you are from the fourth box <laughs> yeah that's what i was gonna say um but yeah it was near the ending which was um surprising all the other urs kind of came at the first like row of cards so um yeah i guess it it beats the allegations that there's rigged boxes everywhere so i think we're getting to a very fun card being pulled soon there we go, Rococo. Um, on screen, there is there was a picture <laughs> from a skit of the Creator Shock podcast when they revealed Rococo. Rococo has been like a meme for quite a while um, before the set, so <laughs> it's kind of funny to pull one here. As I pull the UR, like almost immediately as I was talking about uh, the UR placement in these boxes. So yeah, very nice Lance. Uh, I don't know why it's a Lance, it's a gun. But it is an Umbra card, so I'm very happy about that. Um, I did at least need it, so... Yep, nice, nice, nice there. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, hopefully this kind of format is tolerable to watch. I know a lot of people prefer, like, short-form content, but I'm just not a short-form kind of guy. Um, also, like commenting over the video after doing the editing is like uh, maybe if I provide a commentary first uh, I wouldn't be so like all over the place but uh, yeah it's the first or well, first try and there we go we pulled a foil Astarte as you should see on screen um, what I do like about Grand Archive the Index is it does show like the approximate population of certain cards and only like 344 Astarte uh, exist so I'm very happy about that. Um, I think the same number applies for Perse as well so <laughs> as we pull probably the biggest hit from this set, Academy Guide. Um, not as strong as Dungeon Guide but um, Hey, it's helpful t uh, for Sylvia at least. She is an animal, after all. <laughs> uh, plus, she's she'll probably be nice for like future sets too. Um, if there's other ways to level up. Right, the home stretch here, guys. Um, I do very much appreciate you guys for watching this long. Appreciating, appreciating you for going through my rambling here. I ramble a lot on stream, but even like in, like offline recordings, I ramble a lot as well. And as we pull yet another unique ally, Claude. Um, I think that's the second unique ally for the Astra class, so <laughs> not sure what's up with that. Um, yikes. <laughs> yeah. Not sure if it's like 
Astro favored or not, but uh, let's not uh, let's not make those allegations just quite yet. Let's see how powerful um, Astro is uh, in the actual meta game. Because uh, if they're pretty weak, then it's very unfortunate that um, they wasted a unique ally slot on on a second. But uh, yeah, looking at the timeline and the playback now, it seems like uh, I'm not gonna pull any any more duplicates. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this far into the VOD. Um, I probably did such a bad job with the voice over, but uh, yeah, well, it is the first time, so maybe I'll get better in the future. <laughs> um, there is like a special dish opening in the end where I open like proxies for um, some Warhammer min minis, but uh, yeah, um, if you guys don't want to stick around for that, then you can close the vid now. <laughs> But uh, yeah, even though I didn't pull a sign card, um, still a pretty good haul. Um, I don't know if I already said that or not, but uh, <laughs> yeah, overall I'm kind of happy. A bit of a debate if I want to buy more, um, but that's probably just going to be a future Kuroto problem. Not a problem for me right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to see more box openings, uh, Leora Valkyria, Val 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 Valkyria, um, had another box opening today, and uh, she was opening with uh, Nova from uh, Videre, I think. <laughs> Sorry about not remembering. Um, I was kind of out of it today. As a uh, no stream, but you know. Um, I did have to recover from like my dry voice from yesterday. Um, I will be going back to stream tomorrow as uh, I pull another foil. I think that was my final foil of the box. Uh, or I could be misremembering. Um, but still, uh, lots of people are opening uh, this particular set and I am very happy about it. Hopefully the metagame changes because we're all sick of Lorraine, right? <laughs> we're all sick of Lorraine or Merlins. Uh, but yeah. Uh, next stream, what is gonna be? I have no idea. I didn't. I haven't even done my scheduling for the next week, as uh, I am going back to work, so I won't be able to stream as much as I did in the first week. Oh, there is another foil that I pulled. So uh, I was mistaken about that. Uh, gotta gotta review the this particular VOD again just to redo like the lashes as well. I think I've done a horrible job in that aspect, but I think as I um, clean up the uh, rest of the cards, I did end up with like 21 lashes. <laughs> so I might do it in the future, just single out a card. Uh, a funny card to, uh, to keep count of as I go over my high rarity cards there. Pretty happy with most of them. I'm kind of sad I only pulled one Crimson tier, but hey man, you can always buy singles, right? Or if you're, you can't find any singles in stock, then just buy more, more boxes, I guess. Ugh. But uh, yeah. Um, Two foil SRs is probably above average, uh, so yeah, always happy about that. Um, as I am about to open up the proxy minis here, I did get them from Artel W Miniatures, and uh, I'll I'll have pictures up on on screen on what they look like because they are just in their bits <laughs> form right now. And I don't know if I'll build slash paint them on stream, but gosh, they look fantastic, don't they? Um, the first one's obviously going to be a Nightbringer proxy. I have no idea what the other two will be, but uh, well, I'll find something for them. So as I wrap things up, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Kaim, once again for the BGM. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.